Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis, and welcome back to Living the Wiccan Life. In part two of our episode, we continue our interview with Ryan Buell of A&E's Paranormal State. Well, one of the things that I encounter in the pagan community when people are dealing with the media is they're often mm. really frightened about how it's going to portray them. Sure. And so you, you would say your experience I, I, seems to show that, that it can work out well. It can, but, you, you know, look, I think it's actually... I think the pagans are right to be fearful because they're really, I mean, now it, there's been a, there's so many other ghost shows now that the ghost hunter model is now in our culture and mm -hmm. will be around our culture for a while yet. And, but with pagans and witches, there is such a misconception over what is that. And I remember Elfie, um, who's a pagan and one of our oldest members, she was very nervous because at times she would do rituals or, or magic or ceremony of whatnot. And people honestly thought that she would show up in robes and like light fires and, you know, throw some scented whatever into a pit and there'd be an explosion. <laughs> and um, she was very nervous because she did not want to be portrayed in a bad light. And, you know, we all fought to make sure there was some integrity there and we discussed it. So we were very lucky in that aspect because there have been times where Elfie would perform a ceremony and what you notice is that Elfie is very normal. She does not flaunt herself as a witch. Mm -hmm. She doesn't flaunt herself as a pagan. She even hated it when it would say like Elfie music, pagan. So we changed it to occult specialist because she's like, what does my religion have to do with who I am? Like Ryan, they don't put Ryan Buell Catholic on the bottom of the, you know, the, the titles when they introduce people. So she just wanted to be treated like everyone else, and when she would use that aspect, if it was natural, she'd be fine with it. But I've heard so many horror stories of people who would, they were, they were, wit, they were Wiccan or they were a witch, um, they've been on a couple other shows and they said they were treated pretty badly. So, but I think even that is changing. Mm -hmm. So I think the culture and perception of a witch is changing because even in the South, when people meet Elf Elfie, they just love her and they ask her questions and they're fascinated. They don't look at her as like, you know, something scary. What, is, what has been the biggest challenge of doing this? Um, the show? Or yeah, well, the whole thing. The, the, your whole paranormal research experience. <laughs> well, at first it was to try to break down that taboo. Because uh, I'm very proud of the fact that when Paranormal State first came out, there was only one other show on, Ghost Hunters. And they had their own kind of spin on things, which is perfectly fine because, you know, everyone does. But um, they focus more on just the investigating and not the experiences, not about the everyday individuals who are experiencing these things. In Paranormal State, we fo focused so much more on the people. So, and we always said whether or not you believe in ghosts is irrelevant. You may have a different perception or belief on what a ghost is from us, but that doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, these people are experiencing something, they're suffering, and they want help and they have no one to turn to. So why can't we all just agree on that part at least and just try to resolve matters? So sometimes it'd be psychological, but, and sometimes it'd be explainable, sometimes we couldn't explain it. But the bottom line was we just wanted to show people, you know, hey, it's your grandmother, it's your brother, it's your son, it's your daughter, it's your sister. Everyone is essentially is having experience. It's not some dumb person who never graduated high school or are the only ones who believe in ghosts. You know, we had politicians, you know, attorneys, doctors, dentists, you know, the people at our events, you know, come from all different walks of life. Um, but people were kind of in the closet. They were afraid to talk about their experiences because of being judged. And then when Paranormal State came out, I think that changed and kind of pushed the momentum in an area, made it not so much we can only talk about it during Halloween. Now though, now that our biggest challenge is, um, I guess, sorting through the people who legitimately want help and who just want to get on TV or they're just, they're making up the supernatural or they're using the supernatural to explain something that's out of their control. So in other words, you know, they blame a demon because, you know, they have no money and their house is falling apart and everything's going bad and they think they're cursed. When really they just need to get their lives together and tackle it themselves. 
So now we have literally tens of thousands of cases coming in from all over the country. And we're sitting here, we're just going, man, there's so much to go through. So that's our biggest challenge now is to try to, now that we have busted down that door of the taboo, or, you know, that taboo, now it's like an overload. Now we're trying to sift through, okay, the real experiences versus those who, I mean, I, kind of, I guess it's like going to a doctor and the doctor's like, oh, you're fine, suck it up. You know, there's a lot of people <laughs> who do that, so. I can see why that would be a challenge. It is because these people are absolutely convinced. We had a mom who had two daughters who um, we spoke to, we were talking to her for a while. She had two daughters and one she was convinced was possessed and that this girl would just go into these fits and would start beating on them and hitting them and run and chasing her other sister around the house with a knife. And she was absolutely convinced she was possessed by the devil. When we told her that she needed to get psychological help first because we always have to go through that those steps. And you know, have you been to a doctor? She goes, no, I don't need that because I know she's possessed. Nothing else was happening, no levitations, no speaking in tongues or different languages. Um, no, I guess, documentation of psychic phenomenon, um, just she would start harming others and would harm herself. And she used her religious beliefs as, you know, kind of um, justification for what she was doing. And we were honestly scared for them and for the daughter because clearly she needed psychological help first, but she wasn't getting it because her mom wanted to get an exorcism. And we've had many cases like that where we want to help them, but they want to believe it's a ghost for some reason or it's a demon. A lot of times it's the demon. Mm -hmm. Satan is everywhere in America, supposedly, possessing thousands of people, according to these emails. That, I mean, I even had one woman who was in an abusive relationship, and she said, no, 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 he's not a bad person, he's just possessed. Which I was like, okay. You know, and Katrina, who's a, a grief counselor, I believe she handled that one, but... So it's interesting. You're here on a field trip. Mm -hmm. And could you tell us a little bit about the idea of the field trip? Well, we can't be everywhere, so we've decided, well, you know, some people want to get to know us a bit more. They want to learn a bit more. Um, so we decided that we would put together these events, and we offer them about three times a year. Um, and we go to locations all over the country. We tend to like to pick places that have a lot of history when it comes to the paranormal rich history, like Salem. Uh, in March we were in New Orleans. Uh, in November we're going to Gettysburg. Uh, and the reason why we pick these places is almost kind of like, you know, uh, a place almost. I mean, to some people, the paranormal investigation and these events are almost like them going to church. So these are these, so we pick places for people to congregate to, to, you know, have these experiences and share experiences. And we act as a facilitator. It's not us all the time. We bring in locals in the community to, to you know, talk about various aspects or to do demonstrations or to just participate somehow. And we like each event to be different. So, you know, Salem was a lot more about witchcraft and religion and, um, you know, I guess the misconceptions about all that. Whereas New Orleans was something different. And, you know, we, we have lectures, workshops, ghost hunts, seances, special events. Uh, we redid, redid the witch trials where, uh, in a sense, where we essentially played a game where people could accuse someone of being a witch. And they had to justify their accusations in front of everybody. And they were either guilty or not guilty. And um, people had a lot of fun. And so that's what a field trip is, is really just bringing people together. The majority of people who come, come alone, and then they end up making lifelong friends. And a lot of people who return, they're mainly returning to reunite with their friends and go and have more experiences, not because they want to take another picture with me, because they get tired of taking pictures with me after, like, their fifth field trip. <laughs> so, you know, they just kind of hang out, and, you know, it's, it's honestly like a big family reunion. That's wonderful. Yeah. So if people would like to watch the program, they can see it on, it on a and &E. Well, we actually just finished our last season. Um, after some thought, I decided to, you know, to, you know, I guess, respectfully walk away from the show, and my team decided it was time to. We just decided that we made an agreement at the very beginning that if we did the show, we'd do it until 
we would only do it until we couldn't find a good reason to keep doing it anymore. Or we felt like we were in it for the wrong reasons, or we just couldn't grow anymore. We didn't just want to do a season 10 of Paranormal State just to do a TV show. And we felt that what we wanted to do at the time, we accomplished. Now we wanted to do other things. Uh, but Paranormal State, I think now, I hear that's rerunning on Bio Channel. Uh, I'm sure it'll be on during Halloween. Oh yeah. We just finished our last season. It just aired uh, at the beginning of summer. Um, the DVD comes out sometime in August. Very and cool. And we will be around still doing other projects. What, um, in addition to the PRS field trips, what other projects are you planning? Well, I have a film that we shot and that we're touring the country with right now called American Ghost Hunter. It's a full-length feature film. It's a, a documentary film, not fictional. Um, it's, we, we like to say it as, it's not based on a true story. It is a true story. So you're watching the story as it unfolds. We went to go do something and we documented the entire experience. And so we, we did a 40, 41 or 42 city tour. And we're about to do our second leg of the tour at the end of this month that runs into September. So that's, you know, starting August 19th. Very so, good. Yeah. So for people who want to learn more about all these different things, where can they go? They can go to paranormalresearchsociety.org. Uh, for parafield trips, you can go to parafieldtrip.com. Uh, for the movie American Ghost Hunter, you can go to aghthemovie.com. But really, if you go to Paranormal Research, ParanormalResearchSociety.org, it pretty much has links to all these various different projects. Wonderful. Ryan, thank you very much for taking time to talk to us. No, thank you. Thank you for your hospitality. And thank you. It's you, know, you also participated in the event, so thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Living the Wiccan Life, and until next time, may you blessed be.